What's up everybody, it's Travis here from Travis.media. So back in 2019, I landed a job as a site reliability engineer. Prior to that, I was a developer, but this local company landed a big contract and needed a lot of people quickly. And so I was asked to interview for the position and I landed it, but I wasn't a site reliability engineer. It's a well-defined job title, but at this company, it was more like a person that is tasked to do it all. So my first task or the first contract I found myself on was containerizing applications and deploying them to Kubernetes. Well, I had no experience with Kubernetes. I thought I could learn it quickly, but I soon learned that I couldn't. Why? Because I didn't know the foundational concepts needed first before attempting to understand Kubernetes. It made little sense to me. I struggled with it because of my lack of understanding of the things you need to know first. So in this video, if you're learning Kubernetes, you're planning to learn Kubernetes, or your company uses it, and you just want to get more familiar with it, I'm going to tell you what those concepts were that I lacked so that you can learn them and find more success in your journey of learning Kubernetes. So Kubernetes isn't going anywhere. In fact, it's gaining more and more adoption in the industry. Here's some stats. So the CNCF annual survey released in February 2022, with more than 3,800 participants from six continents, produced this. Number one, a record high of 96% of organizations are either using or evaluating Kubernetes, a major increase from 83% in 2020 and 78% in 2019. So a record high of 96% of organizations. Number two, 93% of organizations are using or plan to use containers in production. And then third, more than 5.6 million developers are thought to be using Kubernetes today. It's not going anywhere. It's a good time to learn it, but you'll need to know these foundations first. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And I'm either going to explain these concepts to you, or I'll point you to a free resource that I recommend that'll get you up to speed. So go and get familiar with these first, and then go head first into Kubernetes. And whenever you're ready to learn Kubernetes, be sure to check out the resource that I mentioned at the end of this video, as I think it's the best resource out there currently hands down. With all that said, let's look at these prerequisites. Number one is the obvious. You need to understand containerization and the orchestration of containers. So here's the big picture. You deploy containerized apps and services to Kubernetes. Thus, it's paramount that you understand containerization. Now, Docker defines a container as a standard unit of software that packages up code in all its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another. So using Docker as an example, which Docker is a popular containerization platform, if you want to containerize your app, you'll first create a Docker file that has all the instructions for building an image of your app. So if you're containerizing a React app, you might start off with a node runtime, and then you'll add your package.json, then you'll add your command to npm install, then you'll add your code, then you'll add the npm run start, command. That would be your Docker file. And then once you have this file assembled, you would use Docker to build these instructions into an image. And this container image is the blueprint for running your app. It includes everything you need to run it, all your dependencies, all your codes, commands, etc. And this image then becomes a container at runtime when you run it. So when you run the image, it's going to follow those steps. It's going to add your package.json run npm install, copy over your code, npm run start, and your container's running. So if you go to an image repository like Docker Hub, you can find thousands of images that you can then pull down to your computer and run in a container. There's images for pretty much anything. So whoever has the image can run it and therefore have all the dependencies and everything needed for that app to run on its own in an isolated container. You can spin it up easily, you can spin it down, you can run it with multiple copies for high availability, and you can imagine the ease and portability of such containers. I give it to you, it works, you give it to me, it works. We're all running the same thing, the same blueprint with all of the same dependencies. Or let's spin up five and load balance between them. But how do these containers work in the big picture? Sure, it's nice to say you can run it locally and it works for everybody, but what's the big idea here? Well, that's where Kubernetes comes in. Kubernetes is an environment for you to orchestrate or automate the deployment, the management, the scaling, the networking of these containers. So prior to learning and tackling the basics of Kubernetes, learn the basics of containerization with an engine like Docker. It's free. Learn the basics of images and containers, building and running them, and containerize a few apps for yourself, and you'll be good. Now, I have a free YouTube video that teaches you Docker in one hour practically, and by the end of it, you'll have two containerized applications, a React app and a WordPress app, and I'll show you how it all works, how to download it, how to get started, basic commands, etc. So I'll put a link to that below or above, be sure to check that out. That will get you up to speed. Now, the second prerequisite you'll need prior to learning Kubernetes is 
cloud basics. Companies often choose to deploy Kubernetes in the cloud as a managed solution. The cloud provider, AWS, Azure, etc., manages the Kubernetes cluster on its own virtual machines or servers. And then from there, it can tie into all the other services that that cloud provider offers, like identity and access, logging, networking, all of that. And if you want to revisit the stats that we mentioned at the beginning of this video, 79% of participants in that survey rely on cloud platforms for their Kubernetes hosting. So say you're working with Amazon's Kubernetes managed service, EKS, you'll need familiarity with cloud concepts like virtual machines and load balancers. So consider taking a basic cloud course like the AWS Cloud Practitioner course on Udemy to familiarize yourself better with their services that work with Kubernetes. Now I do wanna mention when you deploy Kubernetes in the cloud, it can get expensive quick without you even realizing it. If you're using or trying out a cloud managed Kubernetes solution or your company's currently using one, then today's sponsor Cast AI can be a very useful tool for you to get familiar with. Let me take a minute to tell you why. So Cast AI is the leading all-in-one platform for Kubernetes automation, optimization, security, and cost management. You simply deploy a lightweight read-only agent onto your Kubernetes cluster. And from there, you get three free features that work within 60 seconds. First, you get a savings report telling you how much you could save by optimizing instance sizes and types based on your usage. Two, you get a cost monitoring dashboard, breaking things down over time by tags, labels, namespaces, etc. And third, you get a security report that scans your cluster for vulnerabilities and automatically prioritizes the fixes. And that's all free. If you move to a paid plan, then you get much more. You can set automation and it will, around the clock, monitor your cluster and rebalance pods to optimal configurations. And of course, like with any secure product, you remain in control with Cast AI's policies that allow you to specify rules and limits. And you continue to see your savings and changes made as your cluster gets upscaled and downscaled. It will even utilize spot instance automation with fallback that moves you back to on demand while there's no capacity and is free to try out. Why not? But check this, if you use the link below, you'll get the paid optimization feature that I just mentioned for free for your first cluster. So check out the link below to take advantage of this deal today. Back to the video. Now the third prerequisite you'll need to know before attempting to learn Kubernetes is YAML in declarative configurations. YAML, which stands for YAML ain't markup language, is a data serialization language for writing configuration files. It's a superset of JSON, and in fact, every JSON file is also a valid YAML file. Now the resources in Kubernetes are created in a declarative way. You declare how you want things to be, and Kubernetes will make sure that it meets that declaration. And that declaration is provided in a YAML configuration file called a manifest file. This manifest file, again, describes the desired state of a Kubernetes object, and Kubernetes will make sure at all times that it meets that declaration. If you change a value, it will change its infrastructure accordingly. So here's an example of a deployment object written in YAML. This YAML defines a deployment object with three replicas. And there are four sections. There's the API version, which every object gets an API version. There's a kind, there's the metadata, and then there's the spec. The kind is deployment. The name of this deployment is Nginx deployment as indicated there in the metadata. And under the spec, you see the pod template specification indicating that the pods will run one container, Nginx, and there will be three pods. And once this is defined, you run a kubectl apply command with this file in the argument, and the deployment object is created based on this configuration declaration. So YAML files are configuration files that house the declaration of your Kubernetes objects. You can learn the syntax very quickly with a tutorial like this. I'll put a link below to this. I think it's a good getting started YAML tutorial. But really, when you look up an object in the Kubernetes documentation, like I looked up deployments, there are so many examples for you to choose from. If you scroll down, it gives you lots of examples. You can just take this, copy and paste it, and then work from there. And that way you can figure it out on the go. Now, the fourth prerequisite before learning Kubernetes is to have a grasp of networking basics. Many developers have a weakness when it comes to networking, and it has nothing to do with them personally. It's just not really a huge requirement to writing code. It's more ops and system admin focused than it is developer focused. But Kubernetes requires at least a base understanding of networking because of all the moving parts and how everything's interconnected within it, and specifically Linux networking. In Kubernetes, there's communication between the pods and the containers within them. There's pod to service networking, and there's networking out to external destinations. And then the services have different service types like cluster IP, node port, etc. So you'll need to grasp networking concepts like 
OSI layers, protocols, IPs, DNS, gateways, routes. If you skip this, you'll find things complicated when you attempt to learn Kubernetes. Networking was a huge barrier for me and a big reason why Kubernetes was so difficult at first. Now, if you take that Udemy course that I'm gonna recommend you at the end of this, there's a great networking section in that course that covers DNS and Docker networking, CNI, TLS, and certificates. If you wanna go more in depth with it, I'll link below to a four hour YouTube video that'll walk you through all of these networking basics. So when you have a free weekend, make sure you check that out. And the fifth prerequisite to learning Kubernetes is terminal proficiency being good at the command line. To interact with your Kubernetes cluster, you'll use the kubectl or kubectl CLI. This will be the main way of managing your Kubernetes cluster from the terminal. Thus, you'll need to be proficient with Linux commands and with using the VI or nano editor. You'll be using the terminal a lot. And then with kubectl, make sure you use a lot of aliases. For instance, never type the word kubectl like I've been doing. Always put an alias for the letter K. You wanna get pods? K get pods. Or shorten it to KGP. So those are the five prerequisites. Make sure you have a good grasp on them. You don't need to master them. You don't need to spend a year on them. Just make sure you understand them well enough so when you bump up against them in Kubernetes, you'll know what to do. Now for this course recommendation, when you do get ready to learn Kubernetes, this is the best route to go in my opinion. The course that I took at the time and the course that I recommend is the Certified Kubernetes Administrator with Practice Tests course on Udemy. It's a real gem. Let me give you three reasons why. First, the instructor also runs CodeCloud, which is a wonderful site for DevOps, and you get to use all of their labs with this course. So you use their interactive terminal that's already set up, all the challenges will create pods and scenarios for you, and you'll be able to use that to solve all of the challenges of the course. This gets you hands-on and it gives you lots of practice with Kubernetes. There's like 12, 15 questions for everything you learn. Number two, the core concepts section in this course is paramount for every beginner in Kubernetes. If you try to go to the Kubernetes docs to get the big picture, you're gonna find it very difficult because there's a lot of moving parts like the scheduler, the proxy, the API server, the kubelet, and you're bound to get confused. This course gives you a really, really helpful visualization using boats and a dock to explain how all of the parts work. This explanation was the light bulb moment for me when first learning Kubernetes. And third, it's you to me. There's a sale every couple of days making this course like 14 bucks. Be sure you check out travis.media slash Udemy to find out when the next sale is so you can pick this course up. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you get through these prerequisites and learn Kubernetes and find success in your endeavors. So let me ask you, what prerequisite did I leave out? What do you think is required before learning Kubernetes? I'd love to hear it. If you wanna leave a comment below, let's get the discussion going. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.